So now we want to go from the local axis to the global axis. That's the next step. So if uh, I have an uh, arbitrary oriented frame element, so these are the global ordinates now, x, y, and uh, I do have an element. that has nodes one and two. So the local axis, this would be my X prime. And here, this would be my Y prime. So the element makes an angle theta, which is the angle between the X prime and X. So going from X to X prime, we go an angle theta. Now uh, we found a relationship for the degrees of freedom or using the local degrees of freedom where we had one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are all, the reds here are all local. So I uh, want to remind you that uh, for uh, a bar element, that was arbitrary oriented, we were able to say that uh, U1 prime, u2 prime were equal to u1 v1 u2 and v2 we used a transformation matrix that was cs0000 cs correct And uh, this is really what we needed for a bar element because there was no V2 prime uh, and V1 prime. But should there be a U1 prime, V1 prime, U2 prime, and a V2 prime, I could have written that using a four by four transformation matrix as a C, S zero zero minus S C zero 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 C S and zero zero minus S and C multiply by U two V two sorry U one V one U two and V two. And uh, we refer to this as the D prime, a vector in the local axis is equal to some transformation matrix multiplied by D. And now the question is, what is T for that frame element? If I compare this to what I'm looking at here, I can use this transformation matrix, but this do not include three and six, the red six. But if I'm working in plane and I do have a rotation, is this gonna affect, be affected by the angle theta? 
whether I'm expressing three with respect to X prime, Y prime, or with respect to X and Y, it's the same rotation, right? So because of that, we can say that for the frame element, with six degrees of freedom, the rotation degree rotational degree of freedom with respect to local axis are the same with respect to global axis. So we can write T as equal to, of course, this T is gonna be a six by six. And uh, it's going to correspond to degrees of freedom one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's take this a bit. So, when I'm looking at degree of freedom for the rotation three, I am going to see a one here and a one here and zeros everywhere else. And also. And for the remaining four degrees of freedom, I'm basically gonna use T for the bar element or for any vector here. So I'm gonna, if I use this uh, uh, T, I'm gonna get the C S minus S C, C S minus S and C. And here we're gonna get more zeros. So now for a frame element, I can use this uh, T, the six by six, to express D prime as function of D. Well, now this D prime is a six by one, this is a six by one, and this transformation matrix is a six by six. Please remember that uh, T is an orthogonal, square matrix. Therefore, the inverse of T is equal to T transpose. And because of that, I can say that also D is equal to T multiplied by D prime. D is equal to T times D prime. Uh, T transpose, sir. Yeah. Also, F prime is equal to T times F, and F is equal to T transpose times F prime. Now we have K prime, we found K prime. So we already found this, the six by six, the stiffness matrix for a frame element with respect to the local axis. 
we need to transform k prime to find k, the element stiffness matrix with respect to the global axis. So if I write the element stiffness equations with respect to the local axis, I can write that uh, F prime is equal to this K prime multiplied by the D prime. If uh, I multiply both sides by the T transpose, when I multiply T transpose by F prime, this gives me F. So I can write this as F equals to T transpose times K prime. Now for D prime, we know that D prime is equal to T times D. So if I replace this D prime with a T times D, you see here, I have a relationship between F and K, the force with respect to the global axis and D with respect to the global axis. And I have this term here, which is T transpose times K prime times T, which is or will become my stiffness matrix with respect to the global axis, right? F related to D via K. So we can uh, conclude from this that uh, K is equal to T transpose times the K prime that we have multiplied by T, which is the same that conclusion we found before for the beam and bar elements. Of course, here, this uh, all of these are six by six matrices. So we have uh, T here. And uh, I have a K prime here. So using some uh, matrix manipulation, we can show that the outcome here of this operation is gonna be this matrix as it is given in your book. And uh, you can see here we are uh, using the cosine sines as well as the area the length and e and this is a six by six meters so if uh, you can uh, trust that this is the correct outcome of this operation we can uh, take the, uh, re the remaining time to try to apply this to an example, okay? Uh, just want you to note that this uh, stiffness matrix is dependent on the modulus of elasticity, the area A, the lens L, and the moment of inertia I, as well as the sine square, cosine, cosine square, and uh, uh, so we have sine squared, cosine squared, sine cosine, and cosine times sine. 